guys, welcome and or welcome back to Seriously Podcast, home of digital series recaps. But we're doing something a bit different and have been recapping Insecure, the final season. I'm Mary. And I'm Brittany. We are so excited to get into the episode. Today's episode is called Growth, okay? Which is so important to acknowledge the growth that you made over the years because who you are in the past is not who you are today. So we have to get into that. And I'm glad we're talking about it today. This is only episode two of the final season. It's bittersweet, but we're going to have a good time today. If you're not already, please follow us on all social media platforms and Black Oak TV. Um, so we jump ahead. We, it's been a year. And um, in this alternate universe, there's no coronavirus, um, no masks, none of that. You are right. Corona don't live here. Corona don't live here. That's funny. I'm not mad at it. I'm tired of it. I see it. I see the mask enough in my life. I see the mask enough in my real life. I I want to escape it. I like that too. And some of these shows out here, they don't know how to do it with the mask. They just be looking dumb. Because they walk into a room and then take off the mask. Like, no. <laughs> <laughs> it defeats the purpose. What are we doing? And we see both Issa and Molly are killing it at work. You know, Molly struggles at her law firm fitting in. So with the partners, but now you see she's sharing ideas, she's taking initiative and they're like, oh, great job, Molly. Like it feels good. And Issa, mama is working it. Okay. She is elevated. She is escalated. Okay. She is doing the thing. Block has taken over, you know, she has a lot going for her and I'm so excited. Yeah. I'm really proud of both of them. And I love that their friendship is in a really good place. It's like in the best place it's been in a long time. So they've both grown so much and so well. So let's, let's really get into Molly right now. Molly is, she's trying to get her parents to write up a will because you know, she's a lawyer, <laughs> but they don't really care about that. Mama is more concerned with her finding a husband before they, you know, die or get too old. And <laughs> Molly not concerned. Like, you're supposed to tell me I have all the time in the world. You're supposed to tell me it's going to be okay. You'll find your guy. Not put a timeline on my back. Like, mom, I already know this. But can we get into the guy the mom sees Molly with? <laughs> you mean the dad? <laughs> Sir, the the fella, yes, he was not it. And like, he was a nice man. Aren't they all? Great guy, I'm sure. Molly was not feeling him. And the mom, she's like, oh, you know, he played the organ at the church and you like music, so great match. <laughs> Ma'am, what are you doing? No, that means nothing. Also, That was a factor. That was the first thing I noticed. That was the first thing I noticed. Oh my gosh. When she looked down at her son. Not said, her no, son. You cannot have this. No, ma'am. <laughs> it cannot be done. It cannot happen. <laughs> That's not what we're doing today. Absolutely not. <laughs> Thank you so much. We're okay. We're okay. Thank you so much. And I love how he was so proud that he revamped yes. trap music into yes. gospel. I said, sir, you're not the only one. No, I got a few. Am I supposed to be impressed? It's been done. <laughs> <laughs> you're not the first, sir. I got a whole playlist of some, some uh, uh, hip hop gospel music, okay? But thank you. Um, again, just thank you. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, so he's not the one, and um, Mama don't care. This is, you know, what the wedding needs to happen soon. Yeah, it's because she's she's on the timeline, and Molly, now you're on her clock. <laughs> exactly. Next, Molly, she's like, you know what? That's not gonna work for me. So let me go on the the apps. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. She goes on the mm -hmm. dating app, and you know, you know, we all been there on the dating apps. They ask these questions. You know, tell us about yourself. What's it like dating you? And these questions were triggered. These were missiles, <laughs> grenades, okay? It made Molly really think like, dang, especially the what's it like dating you part. And to see like, you know, they gave us a flashback of all the guys. Okay. 
Well, you know, I just want to know that you got on same That's all. And don't take this the wrong way. You really needed a win. Look, I'm tired. Uh, Molly, you literally never let shit go. I, for I didn't forget. I for sure forgot. But Molly was really out here. <laughs> Like she was really struggling in the dating scene. Her and Jared could have been great. Jared was the one that experimented with a guy, right? That's the one. Yeah. I remember our friend had asked like, would you date a man that has had that experience? And off the bat, we I think we both were like, absolutely not. But I've grown as well. And I, I think I, I wouldn't mind that if he had that experience and he enjoyed that, but he, it's not for, well, it, I think for Jared, he said like, he just, it wasn't for him. It he wasn't experimented, for him. it wasn't for mm -hmm. him. I'm okay with that at this age now. Like, you know who you are, you know what you like, you know what you want. But what if he said he did enjoy it? If he did enjoy it, then he enjoyed it. I don't, I think I would be open to dating a bisexual man. Really? I think I would. Okay. Why not? I mean, in this day and age. Yeah, why not? It's, everything is fluid. <laughs> Everything's fluid. Everything, sexuality is a scale. What? Why not? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm not mad. I'm not mad. I can see it. Um, I you can think see what? What are you with... talking about? I can see it. <laughs> I, can, I can see you in the bisexual. I can yeah, see I can it. I can see it. <laughs> what do you think about it? Yep. That's you. Mm -hmm. That's you. You check that box. Mm -hmm. But I think for me, I, I see it, um, I wouldn't just cut them off. Like have the conversation, like Molly would just like, whoa, you're gay. Like, okay, yeah. let me hear you out. <laughs> Tell me about it. What happened? What, what'd you think? What'd yeah. you feel? It's more of a curiosity <laughs> thing for me too. Like I would want to hear more about what, what, ha what the who, what, where, when, and why. I would like to right, hear right, all right, of right. that. I'm open to okay. all, to hearing it all. But yeah, like you said, Molly was just like, yeah, he's gay. But yeah. if a girl did that, it's just her experimenting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's double so standard. There is a double standard there, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think. I mean, I don't want to tell my business, but I felt like I did date a guy who might have been on the down low, but I don't know. Now I got to go check the checklist. I have to go in the <laughs> history books and look into that information. Thank you. <laughs> I will like, be looking like he, into that. <laughs> but if that's your truth, then live in your truth. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, that is. That's what it, you. That's what you have to do. He was one of those guys where it was always a topic of conversation. Other people's sexuality was a topic of conversation. It was kind of like, what? What's going on in your minds? What's happening? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's dissect this. But, but yeah. back to Molly. Back to Molly. I did not like that when she saw what she had on her old profile, she was like, yeah, I was doing too much. Ma'am, if that's your standard, stay, stick to it. Like, no one said that you had to lower it. Because I think she wanted someone that was college educated, doesn't have any kids, and like something else. But it's like, keep to your standard. Keep to your standards. But I also think this was something that Molly was, part of what, the reason like Molly was going to therapy, like just such a stickler for certain things and just wasn't happy. So it was like maybe because she was just so. <sighs> I understand standards, but like there's a thin line between standards and being picky, a very thin line. And I do oh, feel why like Molly be was being picky, like nitpicking every little thing. Like, oh, I don't like how okay. he was walking. Like Molly was that type. Yeah. Like, oh, girl, he was holding his phone like this. I cannot talk to someone like that. Like, <laughs> calm down. Like, that's what I think it was with Molly. Because I'm yeah. all about the standards. Keep your standards high. If you mm -hmm. want a certain, the, you want a guy to be a certain way for you, like, I don't see a problem with that. Yeah. But I feel like there's also a double standard. Like, men could choose, oh, I want a big butt, oh, thin, da, 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 da. But when once women say, oh, he got to be six feet, oh, we picky. Or, oh. It's a control thing. It is. It it's is a, a control standard. thing because that is a double standard. When men have their list, it's they're all encouraged not to change anything because you have to go after what you want. 
when a woman has it, why you mm. want all of this, why you want all of that, why you can't basically lower your standards to fit my uh, criteria over here. And it's like, no, honey, leave me alone. Every time I go back to the dating app and I get those, tell me about yourself, what are you looking for? I'm always like, let me just get to swiping left. <laughs> I don't know. I leave them blank half the time. I'm like, chill girl, fun girl. Like, I don't, I don't, maybe that's a problem. Like, we're not taking the dating app seriously. Oh, never was. Not once have I taken it seriously. Do you want to find, do you want love to find you? Sure, yes. So then we have to take the app serious. I can't. Why? I literally cannot do that. It's something about trying to find love via text. Like, I don't think I can do it. I need to be able to see your face, hear your tone when you're saying things because I'm going to take it a different way than what you intended. So what's wrong with meeting someone or texting someone? But then we're, are we texting the whole week until we meet in person? You meet on Monday, you go out on Tuesday. But then again, that's weird. I don't know you like that. I don't want to meet. <laughs> like, I don't know. I think I'm more open now to meeting per people in person and then forming a genuine connection that way. I think when I was younger, I was all open to online dating. And I don't think I want that anymore. Yeah, and also, there's no one there on these apps. That's true. That's very true. I delete the apps every... I'll, I don't even keep it for it, maybe, I don't know, a couple of weeks, I delete them and I'd re-download, delete, re-download. It's not a, it's an unhealthy relationship with these apps. You better than me, cause I have it only for 24 hours. <laughs> That's not enough. If you guys don't impress me within 24 hours and it's normally white men, even though, <laughs> even though I change my preference all the time to black, they only show me white men. So I have to delete. The Be Okay app, that app is um, not for the pain of heart. ain't never lied. That app, you have to have a, sh <laughs> you, you have to be strong for that app. That app is not for everybody. Okay. There's a certain type on that app. And um, I don't know. I don't know. Hinge definitely for me is better not to say I've had more luck on that app, but I feel like the choices are a little bit better on that app. Um, but I just feel like there's a lot of dead profiles, like guys who maybe made it and then deleted it. Like they don't talk or match or nothing. Um, I, I don't know if I'm gonna find love on the apps either. Oh, definitely. If you guys find love on the app, best of luck and congratulations. <laughs> I support, if anybody wants to, to get on the apps, I support it, absolutely. All right, let's get into our girl Issa. You know, she got the, the block. <laughs> Wow. 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 What you and Sean have come up with is incredible. And his story, so inspiring. You really blew us away. Like, <laughs> Thank you so much. That means a lot. I'm so excited that this is all finally coming together. Oh, agree, agree. Um, but I'm, I'm a little concerned that this show might be a bit big for Crenshaw's level of experience. What do you mean? Uh, well, it's pretty long. It's at the high end of our budget. And I noticed in the presentation there's supposed to be um, a group of drummers, interpretive dancers, uh, multimedia, and people on lowrider bicycles. They want to support the, support the community, but they, they don't. They want to support it on their terms, how they want it. I'm like, no, you're defeating the whole purpose. Issa convinces them that, you know, if you go with Crenshaw, y'all get to say that y'all discovered him. Like, oh, you know, they love to discover. You know, they love to discover Christopher Columbus. We see you, okay? Talking about somebody discovering, okay? We ain't gotta get into that right now, but they love that. So in the end, they they agree that Crenshaw is just gonna be the artist that they work with. So then she goes to tell Crenshaw, and let me tell you something, Kofi as a hood dude, I don't see it, sorry. Not seeing it. Oh my god! I could not, We're never could not same. take him serious. You don't watch Queen Sugar. I used to watch Queen Sugar. I think I stopped season season four, but that's the only thing I see him as. That's why I don't see him as being something outside of that. Because I did see that movie he was in, in that Netflix, that Netflix film he was in with Mac Wilds. And he pretty much played the same character. Yeah, I believe it. That's my boo. If we could just, um, if you could maybe insert my picture of me and him from when we first met, you could insert that here. Um, <laughs> 
and you can you guys can see black love okay great you guys got it um so i love him and i see it i was i was there guys yeah yeah and it was it was true love you know what i mean <laughs> he wanted to make sure me and him got a picture together it was a whole thing it was like oh my god no people will say it's photoshop i don't know but it's real love. And I, I liked it. I felt like he did Crenshaw in justice. I only see him as Ralph Angel. I only see him as Ralph Angel. To each their own. Ralph Angel is a brooding, angry man. So it's not that far. Brooding, I see him. Him with all this emotion. I was just like, please have a seat, Kofi. Oh, shit. Word. Yeah. Yo, that's what's <laughs> up. I knew you get that shit done. I appreciate that. Yo, thank you. I'm Yo, really I'm excited. About to change the game on these niggas, boy. Uh -huh. Yo, I'm talking straight flex mode, nigga. Okay. Yo, you know that little art performance piece. I see the same. Okay. <laughs> so she tells him, "Listen, you're in. There are some changes, and Ooh, he no. is not here for it at all. He's like, how you gonna change my show when that's my show? <laughs> that's my whole show." <laughs> So what you want me to do? How that work? That's mm -hmm. my show. Like literally, what are we gonna do then? So we cancel. <laughs> At the actual show, Crenshaw says, "F what you heard. F what you're talking about. I really don't care. I'm gonna put on the show that I want to put on. So stay mad. I don't know what to tell you." He really didn't care. He ended up calling Issa a sellout, and he's like, "You you will want to be savior. I didn't ask for this. You Hello. came to me. Hello. Like you you came to me because you say you love my passion." This is my passion. So what are we what are we talking about? But you know, I feel like with Issa, I see where she was coming from too, because at the end of the day, this is still a business. So if we talked about one thing, you can't switch the script and shake the table. That's not what we're here to do. But he's an artist. You know how artists are about their stuff. <laughs> he's an artist and he's sensitive about his <laughs> ish. You know he's he's sensitive. He's sensitive about the ish, okay? They don't play. They don't play. And they always say you working with somebody I don't respect. <laughs> Artists love to say you working with an artist I don't respect. Who cares? <laughs> it's like only their work matters. Yeah, that's it. No, their work is the best work. So there's no competition. That's what um, Crenshaw is like. And then he goes, sound check and fall. I appreciate him for knowing the terminology. They studied. Kofi studied his, his the work, okay? First of all, we didn't even mention he's an ex. We didn't even mention he's an ex convent turned fashion designer. Do it. Do it like it should be day. I love it. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> and he also employs other convicts. I was like, you know what? I'm not mad at this. I love this idea. We love to see it. No snitch. Tyreek is eating snacks on the job. <laughs> you can eat snacks too, bro. You're a free man now. Word. All right. It's all about the art and the community, and that's what we love. Absolutely. I want to know what he was doing in the jail. Like, yo, tie this around. Let's see. Oh, that's fire. Like, you might be putting fashion shows on in the jail. Now, that's Crenshaw right there. That's Crenshaw. This show, I was here for it. I was a little nervous. Doesn't seem so bad. Yeah. Oh shit. Did all my invisible niggas go to heaven? I said. It was a great show. I was here for it because when po white people do stuff like this, when white designers do stuff like this, it's called fashion. It's called art. But when black designers do people it, it's scared. risky. It's, it's whoa. It was, they fear for their life. It's too much. It's when I, I was nervous. I said, whoa. When it came out on the low riders, I said, I see you. I got it. I got it. I wasn't mad. And you see Seth is there. He looked like he's cringing. He's looking like, yo, what is this? He's looking scared, um, shook. Yeah. Um, but all in all, <laughs> you know, and at this point, Issa's also like, Seth hates it. I'm going to have to start driving back on the lift. Like, this is too much. I'm fired. I will never work in this town again. But come to find out, Seth is like, 
just blew my mind. Right, because I had more of a wow. That second portion of that fashion show was like, whoa, okay, in your face. Oh, look at that. Look how, look how that worked. At the end of the episode, Nathan comes over. Issa called him. I want that to be known. You're right. At the end of the episode, Issa called Nathan over. And, you know, he is chatting to himself because she's falling asleep. <laughs> he was. He was having a whole conversation by himself. Talk about, oh, I'm trying to learn to braid. Uh, uh, mm, sir, I'm asleep. Mm-hmm. So he's like, you know what? I see you over here tired and it's okay. Let me call this lift. Let me get up out of here. At this point, I'm like, you still don't have a car? Don't judge him. Don't judge him. He's a he's a barber. Mm-hmm. But in like in LA. <laughs> um saving up for the for the party. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. He's working on it. Hopefully. Um, but she asked him, well, suggests to stay over. Spend the night. But you know, she only got one bedroom, one bed. So they sleep in the same bed. And he, he got no shirt on. I said, oh. He ain't got no shirt on. Nothing. I don't think he had no pants. Maybe he had boxes. Maybe. So naturally, <laughs> they get to um, making out. The most awkward thing happens. <laughs> Um, okay. Uh, you okay? <laughs> In his mouth. He really was just like. <laughs> what is happening? So he made her feel safe. He made her feel safe. And then he left. And then abandoned her. In the middle of the night. Even though I know she likes Nathan, she's just not ready to date at all. Like, she really thought her and Nathan, her and Lance. I don't know who that is. <laughs> her and Lawrence were going to make it through. Yeah, it was gonna, That was going to be in game. That was supposed to be in game. So she's just laying there like, this is my life. The crazy thing is, Nathan ain't even want to be. So for you to ask me to stay over and then you crying in my face, crying in my mouth. I have to leave. I gotta go. I gotta go. I could have been in the lift a long time ago. Now the prices have surged. (laughs) It's raining outside. It's now $1,000 for me to get home. I could have been gone when the price was $20. (laughs) And I could have been home. (laughs) How? Messing with that girl. (laughs) Thanks a lot. All right, guys, that's it for this week's episode. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, be sure to use hashtag seriously insecure so we'll read them. And make sure you guys are following us at Seriously Podcast on all social platforms. See you guys next week. Bye.